Welcome painters, we continue with this series of videos on how to paint Mephiston. Today I will show you how to paint the clothes. I will use the mixed technique with airbrush and brush. So if you're ready, let's go for it. I start with a base color of scarlet red. I shake the bottle and put it on the plastic blister. I will also add some drops of matte medium because the game color range tends to be satin, so adding some drops will kill the shine. I add some drops of water as well and mix everything. The consistency of the mixture is crucial I'll leave a link to a video where I explain paint dilution and handling of the airbrush. I put it inside the airbrush cup. I will use the Infinity CR Plus with a 0.15 millimeter needle. I test it and will apply thin layers. Look closely in the box. I press softly to apply thin layers. If we push down the trigger too hard, too much paint will flow out, which will obscure some of the details. So, the thinner the layers, the better. The more layers you apply to the same part, the more intense the color becomes. So it's best to apply a layer, let it dry, and then apply another thin layer. And here you can see the final result. I painted three or four layers. First highlight, I will use a mixture of scarlet red and bloody red. I put both colors on the blister. And I will add some drops of matte medium. The reason, as I always say, game color paints tend to be satin, so we have to add some drops of this product to matte the color. I also add some drops of thinner because the game color range is thicker and we have to use thinner to get a perfect dilution. We mix everything very well. I'm going to add a little more thinner. And we put it inside the airbrush, try it out, and let's apply the first highlight. I will paint more layers on the armor as I want to distinguish it from the skirt. So I apply one layer, let it dry, and do it again so the color becomes more intense. I will apply less layers to the skirt so I am playing with the intensity. The difference between the armor and the skirt must be noticeable. I also apply more layers on the upper part of the skirt to get a contrast between the upper and lower parts. It is very important to tilt the airbrush so that the paint does not enter the recesses of the skirt. I mean, on the folds, the paint must hit on the upper parts. I also paint the armor. I'll put up a link in the video description to a video where I explain how to paint Blood Angel armor. Here you can see the final result. This is turning out spectacular.
Next step, I will use the brush to highlight the breastplate. And first of all, I put all of the colors on the wet palette. As you can see, I will use Sunny Skin Tone, a great color to highlight with since its composition contains yellow and white. As I explained in many other videos, to highlight, use colors that contain yellow in its composition because yellow adds luminosity and white does not illuminate, it desaturates. Look in the box. You can see that I added a little bit of matte medium to matte the color and sunny skin tone. I mix everything and I will use that mixture as the first highlight for the breastplate. Use a brush with a fine point, which you find comfortable. If you look, the breastplate is sculpted in lines. An easy way to paint this is to tilt the figure a bit and use the side of the brush to get the paint on the highest areas. As you can see on this video, so I will highlight the upper parts to get contrast little by little. Highlighting the upper chest and these sort of abs, especially on the upper parts. As we apply more highlights, we keep adding sunny skin tone. Here you can see the final result. Next step, I will paint the so-called points of light. I will add light flesh to the previous mixture and I will use it to apply some points of light on the breastplate to make it shine. Be very careful with this color. It contains a lot of white and if we add too much, we will spoil all of the work. We just have to add a little bit of light flesh and only apply it to certain parts in very small areas. In this way, we will make our armor shine. Now, I will apply some shadows to get more contrast on the armor. I take violet, which is a cold color and adds depth and I also add a little bit of red so that it's not so strong. And if you want, you can use the matte medium to matte this color. And I apply these shadows on the sides of the breastplate so we will get a stronger contrast. Notice I apply a shadow let it dry, and then repeat. I also focus on the lower pectoral area to apply the shadows and thus create a greater contrast. I also paint the nipples with light flesh. Here you can see the final result. Once the armor is finished, we continue highlighting the skirt as it needs more highlights on the upper folds as well as on the lower ones. Very important, when applying highlights on the top of the skirt, we will use a mixture of red and sunny skin tone, but when we are highlighting the lower areas, 
we won't use this mixture since we have to achieve a contrast of light between the upper and lower areas. The lower part should have less light, so we will use red, or red with a little bit of sunny skin tone, very little. So we will create contrast. The upper parts are the most luminous, but be careful. Don't highlight as much as the armor, since the breastplate is like a plastic or a metal surface. It has those highlights with light flesh. So, fabrics must be highlighted less, that's very important. On the upper areas of the folds, we will use the red and sunny skin tone mixture. Never light flesh. In this way, we will differentiate both materials, armor and fabric. Here you can see the final result. You can see the difference between the breastplate and the skirt. Now, I have to shade the skirt. I'll mix black with a little bit of violet. The violet is a cold color and will give us depth. And a little bit of gory red. And since this color is from the game color range, I will add a little bit of matte medium. I add water and mix everything very well. Very important, the dilution. I put it inside the airbrush and set the same pressure as always, 1.8 bar. And I will apply these shadows in the deepest areas of the skirt. We can regulate shadows. I mean, by applying a thin layer we get a shadow. But, what if we apply a second layer to the same area? The color becomes more intense, you know, the color becomes darker, so we can regulate the intensity of the shadows. So for example, we apply more layers to a very deep part, so the color becomes darker. And on less deep areas, we will apply only one or two layers, so we adjust the shadow's intensity. Here you can see the final result and see that there are different kinds of shadows, deeper and less deep. Magical touches, a crucial part in this process. Now, with a brush, I take a little bit of black and apply it on the deeper parts of the skirt and on the parts where different materials meet. For example, between the foot and the fabric, we have to apply this strong shadow. Look closely in the box as I load the paint and apply it. I use the brush since, with the airbrush, it is quite difficult to get to that part. So as you can see, the method of airbrush and brush is very good, since depending on the area to work, we will use one tool or the other. We can also highlight the skirt more now. If I notice it needs some more highlights, I apply a highlight or a glaze to blend it. This is the step to touch up lights and shadows. My advice, don't skip this step. 
since it makes a lot of difference. You see that on the back part, the skirt is darker. Here you can see the final result, how cool the skirt looks. Now we have to paint freehand on the skirt. I know that many of you believe that is the most difficult part. And on the one hand, you're right. Freehand is somewhat complicated. But on the other hand, practice will help you improve. When I started painting, I wasn't any good at it. But with effort, hard work, and practice, and practice, and practice, I got better. In this case, Mephiston's freehand is pretty easy. It's a line all the way around the skirt, and then some triangles and drops of blood. First of all, we paint the line around the entire skirt. I use the black as is. I add some drops of water to make it flow properly and use a brush with a very fine tip. And let's paint the line. In the shadowed areas of the skirt, you'll have to mark that line a bit more so that it shows up. And very important, go slowly. If you hurry a lot, it's pretty bad. So slowly, without any hurry. I encourage you, if you have any questions about this video, to comment below. And if you like the video, share it with your community and friends so you can help me make this channel more widely known. As you can see, I keep painting the line. I'm going to make it a little thicker, little by little. I check that it is the same size thickness everywhere and correct it. This is a slow process, but it is so worth it since the skirt will look very cool at the end. These little details make all the difference. Now I will paint the triangles. Just put a bit of paint and move it to make a triangle. Now I mark a little dot to see the separation between a triangle, drop of blood, triangle and drop of blood, and so on for the rest of the cape. I turn the figure because I find it easier to paint the drop of blood in this position. I finish a drop, now I start a triangle, and so on.
Here you can see the final result of the freehand. All of the droplets and triangles. Next, I will paint the base color of the cape. I will use dark sea blue and black. I don't want a pure black, so I add this color to get a different twist. I will only use the brush to paint the cape, as many of you do not have an airbrush, and I want you all to be happy with this channel. So this one's for you. To paint the base color, I apply thin layers. Apply a thin layer, let it dry, and repeat. This is how we achieve good results. Here you can see the final result. Now to paint the first highlight. I will use this color from the Panzer Aces range. I add this color to the previous mixture, add some water, and I will apply the first highlights. Where? On the upper parts of the cape. This process would be super fast with an airbrush. We would first have to mask all of the red parts, skirt and armor. Then take the airbrush and apply the first highlight. But I am using the brush right now. It will take longer, but this way you can see how I blend colors. Apply paint and then with a moistened brush, blend it with the base color. I mean, I apply the paint I moisten the brush and blend it. I also take the opportunity to paint the gloves, which are the same color as the cape. As you can see, I apply thin layers, let them dry, and repeat so that the color becomes more intense. On the back part, I highlight the upper areas leaving the deepest areas without highlight. You can see I apply a layer of paint and drag it to blend it with the previous color, that is, with the base color. Here you can see the final result. Next step. Now, with the almost pure color, I will paint the second highlight. Pay close attention to where I highlight on these folds which I want to emphasize. To create a better contrast, but be careful, do not highlight the cape too much as we want the red to stand out more, but we must highlight it to some extent. We just mark some parts to create contrast, but the most important part on this miniature is the red. Keep that in mind. Highlight properly. We are highlighting, but little by little. A good tip is to outline the gloves and cape to add more definition to those parts. Add some light inside. The relief of the cape is also important. Notice I am not using white, 
but a gray with a little touch of green. Here you can see the final result. This is already taking shape. I use Highlight Italian Tank Crew from the Panzer Aces range for the third highlight. It is a good color since it is a fairly pale green and it's perfect to highlight the cape. It does not contain too much yellow so it's perfect. I want the red to stand out more than the black so I will use this color to highlight so the cape and gloves do not stand out too much. I highlight on the previous areas but reducing the area to be highlighted, a smaller surface. It is just to add more definition to the gloves, some of the folds, to add tension to the folds. So I highlight them a little bit more to reinforce the highlights, little by little. Pay close attention to where I apply the highlights. It's also good to highlight the cape relief a bit more. Here you can see the final result, how the highlights are more noticeable. Last step, we have to apply the shadows. I will use violet, which as you know is a cold color and adds depth. I will also add a little bit of black to darken it more. and I shade in the deepest areas. This step is crucial, don't skip it. As you can see, I take some paint, place it and drag it so I blend the color. This part is deeper, so we have to add more layers of shadow. Apply one coat and then do it again. You see here the contrast between light and shadow. An easy way to blend is to apply the paint on the surface wet the brush, and then move it to blend it. For example, on the gloves, for the deeper parts I add more black, and for the upper parts more violet. Since we have to achieve a contrast of shadows, darker on deeper areas and lighter on upper areas, violet is perfect for that. We tone the gloves in the process. Here you can see the final result. I hope you found this video helpful and don't miss the next one where I will explain how to paint Mephiston's sword Another cool video. Did you find it easy or difficult? Comment below so I'll know your opinion. Don't forget to hit the like button, share the video with your friends, ring the bell to be notified of any new videos, and don't forget that in the video description there is a full list of the products that I use.
If you live in Spain, you can get all of the products at Goblin Trader, in France at Hobby Shop, and in the United Kingdom at Element Games. Folks, see you in the next video.